What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. For those of you new, my name's Sam Clark, you're watching One Life Cars and on this channel we show you guys how to fix your car. Today you join me with a Ford Focus, this is a, a TDCI one, a diesel Ford Focus. Uh, it looks like an ST line but it's not, it's got a sort of body kit on it. And in today's video I'm going to show you guys how to remove and replace your brake pads and disc. We've actually got new pads already on it so I'm not going to be putting the new pads on it today but we'll show you the process to remove them and replace them and also the new disc that we've got here. So guys, without further ado, let's crack on and show you guys how to replace the brakes on the Ford Focus. Right guys, so first thing you want to do is get the car jacked up and secure. So I'm going to jack it up and support it with some extra stands or use a wheel or use some chocks or wood, wood, anything you can to support the car, but make sure it's supported. Do not rely on the jack on its own. And also before you fully jack it up, get it ready on the jack and loosen the wheel nuts. Don't fully loosen them, just take the snap off him and then, then keep him quite tight because you don't want the wheel to come loose while the weight of the car's on it. So we'll get those loosened, we'll get it jacked up, we'll get it supported, make sure it's supported guys, keep yourself safe and we'll get the wheel off and then we'll look at taking the brake caliper off the disc off and show you guys how to replace them right guys as you can see we've got the car jacked up we've got it supported by the wheel in this case because we don't have actual stands like i said make sure you support the car because you don't want to work under a jack it's not safe uh, if you've not got access to anything to to support it with use the wheel you take off like i have there so brakes themselves first thing you've got to do is take the pin off here so you've got a pin here that sticks in here and there uh, it's dead simple use a flat screwdriver catch it at any point and just pop it out like so next thing you want to do is get the caps off the back of the caliper most cars will have these little plastic caps uh, on the caliper bolts themselves the caliper bolts are always on the back of the caliper going back in that way and the best way to look for them is that they'll always be on some sort of rubber grommet like that they'll stick out they'll be quite obvious most of them have these little plastic caps to keep the crap out of them to get them off and out of the way keep them safe you don't want to lose them so to get the caliper off itself, you're going to need a Allen key bolt or, or a bit in your ratchet, whatever suits you. I'm going to use an Allen key bolt and put an adjustable on the end of it for leverage to make sure I can undo it. And this is a 7mm Allen key. Or if it's a, a bit, it'll still be, it'll be a T7 bit. So as you can see, here, I've got this unadjustable. There's better ways of doing it. You'd be better off with a ratchet and stuff, but they can be quite tight. You don't want to put too much pressure on a ratchet if they're really tight because you'll snap your ratchet. I've done it a few times. So just to take the slack off them, try and do this method using Allen key and a, an adjustable or something solid that can't break. Just to take the, uh, the snap off them and then you can undo the rest of them with your ratchet to make it quick and easy. Obviously, make sure we're going anti-clockwise. You'll find that if you're doing both sets of brakes, you'll turn them an opposite way on each side because they're opposite sides. This is the driver's side, so I'm going to be looking to go down, which is anti-clockwise. So I'll get those undone, and we'll look at pulling the caliper off. It might be quite tight. Uh, I'll, I'll talk you through that as well. And then we'll move on to taking the pads out of the way and getting the uh, caliper mount off, which is two other bolts. And then we can get the disc off itself and replace it with a new one. So, so I've undone the two uh, 7 mil Allen key bolts in the back there that I showed you earlier. Next thing you want to do is get the caliper off, but it can come across as quite tight. So the best thing to do is get a flat screwdriver or something like, and just prise it up a bit from the top and then prise it from the bottom so you come off easily and it should come off quite easily. Some of them are quite stiff. If you've got uh, if your pads are all the, all the way worn down and it's metal on metal, they'll be really tight to get off. But you know, once you've got those two bolts out, uh, you save to prise it away another thing too guys when you've undone this bolt here try and pull it out a bit because it will catch you can see there on the camera it'll catch that so you can't pull the the caliper off and you'll think that there's you know another bolt in or you've missed something but make sure you pull them out so there's plenty of clearance and then you can just stick anything in it and prise it out like so once the caliper's off you'll find you've got a pad in the back. Some pads uh, clip on to the mounting like this one on the front on both sides. A lot of them have clips on the back so they can clip into the back of the cylinder itself. So that's just a case of prising it off like so and that's out. As you can see here, uh, these pads are still quite new. They were replaced not long ago. So we're gonna put these back on today. 
next thing too if you're doing your brake pads and you're putting new pads on that are obviously a lot thicker than your old pads you might have a pad that's worn down to say a few mil and you're putting a new pad on that's 10 20 mil thick so obviously you're not gonna have the spacing in here as your piston will be all the way out so what you gotta do is get your bonnet open and then once it's open you can look to over to the left side of the car the uh, brake master cylinder is always on the side of the pedal so if it's obviously if it's a left hand drive car it's going to be on this side the uk right hand drive cars are always on this the right hand side the same right side as the driver's side and you'll find some sort of tank at the back it, sometimes they're buried beneath this plastic on the focuses you can see them and get to them and that's your brake master cylinder reservoir so you can undo that which may so you can undo that, which means that any pressure built up as you're pushing the piston back and pushing the fluid back through the system can be released out of here because you don't want to put too much pressure on it all as you could potentially burst the pipe. It's unlikely, but it makes it a lot easier for you to push the cylinder back if you want to do the cap off the master cylinder reserve first. So that's off now. We've released any pressure, which means we can push this back a bit. I don't need to on this today, but if you've got worn down pads and you're replacing them for new pads that are a lot thicker, you're gonna need to rear, you'll be probably be told if you're new to this that you need a wind back tool. Rear calipers tend to need the wind back tool. Front ones, I've never come across one yet that does. You can literally lever it back. Best thing to do is get two big flat screwdrivers or in this case, two adjustables or an adjustable and a flat screwdriver, whatever suits. And you want to sort of create a, like this so you can pull on both sides so you get an even pressure on both sides of the piston to push it back they're quite stiff you might think it's not going to move but enough pressure it will move and it will push back and you just want to push the piston back basically as far as it can go so you can fit your new pads in and get your new pads around your new disc and have enough clearance so once you've got your caliper pushed back that's that done for the brake pad side you can put your new brake pad back in the one that clicks in the piston Again, it'll be a bit stiff, it might seem a bit awkward, but it does go in, you just gotta line it up nice and straight and the right way around would help and clip it in like so. Anyway, that's the caliper itself. Another thing guys, try not to do what I just did and dangle it off the lead. It'll be all right, but you don't really want to put pressure on that hose because you don't want to break your hydraulic hose and that's gonna create a whole new problem. So try and just wedge it up there so the hose has got a bit of slack on it. Next thing we're going to do is get the mount off itself. Now, it's pretty simple. It's two bolts, one there, one further down, as you can see. And that means we can release this caliper mount out of the way and pull the disc off. These are floating discs. Some cars will have a couple of screws, Phillips screws or Allen, Allen key torx bits, whatever, holding the disc in just to keep it in place. It's not really doing, it's not holding the pressure because the nuts and the threads themselves hold the disc. But, so look out for that if you're not on a focus uh, for any screws in here to release the disc. And these are just floating. So once we pull that mount off, we can literally slide it straight off. So I'll let you know what size bolts these are and the best tool to use. And we'll get the caliper mount off itself. All right, guys. So the caliper mount itself, we've got an 18 mil socket on a ratchet. The reason I'm using a ratchet on this is because I've already had these off recently, so they're not that tight. But what you want to do is, is get an adjustable and some sort of bar on it for leverage or use the, your socket and a strong bar. You don't really want to use your ratchet as if they've never been off before, they're going to be really tight and you'll end up snapping your ratchet. So if you're doing this for the first time, they've not been off, get your 18 mil socket or an adjustable on it. And then once you've got it into position like so, for example, the ratchet down there, at this point, you want to put a bar or something on the end of the ratchet for a bit of leverage. They can be very, very tight. Uh, just persevere with it, like with anything on these sort of jobs. You will get it off. Just don't give up, get some leverage and try not to use your ratchet as you'll snap ratchets. I've done plenty of them. So 18 mil, two bolts, get these two off and we can pull the caliper mount off and look at changing the disc. The disc is off. Uh, I'll just show you for the sake of the video, they can be quite tight and stiff these because they get a bit of rust around the bolts. Uh, what I recommend doing, if they're really, really tight, I did a, a BM the other week and I had to hammer it off literally with a lump hammer. So 
if they're really, really tight, it's just basically rust sticking it. So you just want to get a hammer and lightly tap it around the back. If you're replacing the disc, if you're not replacing the disc, use a rubber mallet or something that won't damage the surface of the disc. You don't want to put big chunks in it. There, and just evenly tap it round until it comes loose and pulls off. There'll be nothing else holding it on. It's just sometimes they can stick with the rust. Now, your new disc. The first thing you want to do, guys, is copper grease the inside to avoid any squeaking metal on metal. So get yourself a tub of copper grease, level loads of it on the inside, a bit on the hub itself, and then the new disc will literally slot on. Sorry about that. Like so. Push it into place, and then it's as simple as now getting your caliper mount. If you really want to, you can get some brake cleaner and give the disc a good clean. Obviously, I've got lots of oil on it and stuff, but it'll wear off quite quick anyway. They need to wear down a bit anyway when they're new. So you're going to get your new caliper mount, and that will simply slide over it like that and go on the inside of the brackets, like so on the back. And then you can get one of your 18mm bolts like so line them up and get them started it's just a case of getting both 18 mil bolts back in uh, nice and tight uh, you, if you want official torque ratings let me know in the comments below and i'll give you the torque rating for each and every bolt if not uh, use your ratchet to tighten them back up and give the ratchet a good sort of tight push down you don't need to hang off it you don't need to put a big bar on it you don't need to use an impact gun to tighten stuff up it's too much and you'll never get it off again so you know give it a good nip you know make sure you put plenty of pressure on it and again if you really want proper torque ratings let me know in the comments below and i'll help you out with that so that's your mount back on get that tightened up and the next thing we can do is look at it sliding the caliper back on if you've pushed the piston all, piston all the way back, it'll go back on quite easy. If not, you'll find the gap's not big enough to go on the disc, and at that point, you want to look at pushing the caliper back even further. That's why I say push the piston as far back as it will go when you give yourself plenty of clearance. So we'll get this tightened up. Uh, we'll get the caliper slid back on. Another thing too, guys, I've missed is the front brake pad. So this pad is clipped into the caliper mount, like so. See how you've got grooves? there and there and it'll just sit in like that and then the uh, caliper itself will go around it like that we can look at tightening that up and finishing the job off well, i'll get this tightened up i'll get the caliper on and then we'll finish the video off for you guys but you're nearly there that's the brake discs and pads on your ford focus this is a, a tdci uh 61 plate but if you've got this shape focus, I think it's a Mark Three, Mark Three focus. Then basically your brake system is going to be the same on all of them, the petrols and the diesels. The only variant will be the STs. The STs, I'm not 100% on this. I think they have bigger discs and, and calipers. They might not though. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. But this is pretty much a generic brake disc and pad video for all Ford focuses of this age and shape. But anyway guys, I'll get that back tightened up, I'll get the caliper on and uh, I'll show you guys for one last time and we can end the video there. Right guys, as you can see here, we've got the caliper back on in position. Uh, I've done the two Allen key bolts back up, uh, just for reference, that's a 7mm Allen key. Uh, nice and tight. Again, if you want torque ratings for the official torque rating to tighten the bolt, let me know in the comments below and I'll tell you then. But if not, just give it a good nip. Don't hang off it. Don't put a bar on it. A good nip on the ratchet is fine. Just make sure it's tight. So that's back into position. Uh, make sure your disc is all the way in. Again, copper grease behind the disc if you've not already done it. Don't forget that as it might squeak a bit. Copper grease behind the pads if they're new. Uh, just avoids little squeaks and annoying noises while you're driving. And that's about it other than the clip. The clip's dead simple. You just want to place one side in first into these little holes. like so make sure that's all the way in and then what i normally do is is i put the other pin in the hole and then bend, bend that back round you might have to tap it in a bit and then you can get a flat screwdriver and bend this bottom bit round so it goes on this side so you've got two 
sort of tabs on the caliper mount you just want them to catch it that just stops the caliper itself from rattling around too much on the mounts it's a bit awkward with one hand but you get the idea guys so get your spring back on properly i'll finish that with two hands when i've stopped filming and that's about it you can put your wheel back on get your wheel nuts as tight as you can with it floating they don't have to be fully tight just make sure it's on all the way straight before you put the weight back on the car so it doesn't sort of set the wheel at a funny angle and then tighten them up good with a bar again if you've got an impact uh wrench don't use it to tighten the wheel nuts up because it just makes it a nightmare to get off again in the future just you know use your wheel brace or your wheel bar and sort of give it a good you know a good push down make sure it's tight but don't go mad on it you don't need to stand on it and all that and like i keep saying if you need torque ratings for any of the bolts in this video let me know in the comments below and i'll get back to you on that but other than that guys that's about it for this video that's how to replace your brake pads and brake discs on the ford focus mark III. Uh, this covers you from the 60 61 plates up to 2015 before it goes to the mark IV. but like i say with all my brake videos they're pretty generic on most cars you'll find that most cars have a similar setup with the brake pads and discs if you need to know anything you got any questions let me know in the comments below and i'll get back to you if you have a request on this car on any car you've seen on the channel again like i always say let me know in the comments and i'll do a video for you but other than that guys that's it for today my name's sam clark you're watching one life cars and until next time peace